the Trump tax plan, the budget showdown, and Trump's first 100 days. I'm Adam Bearn, and this is The Square Circle. for helping people want to launch a new charity or need to raise funds voluntary solutions can help you have a passion for helping people we have a passion for helping you visit voluntary solutions dc.com 844-739-5488 hello and welcome to the square circle i'm your host adam Bearn. joining us today are bill buck of mywallet.com gregory clay of gdclay.com and leaf larson of craft dc good evening good evening thank all you all right President Trump released his long-awaited tax proposal this week. Here's Grover Norquist of Americans for Tax Reform discussing the plan on CBS this morning. Uh, well, it's extremely positive. He had talked during the campaign about taking business taxes down to 15 percent, which is below the European average. Right now we're at 35 percent, way above the European average of 23. Uh, that would make us very competitive. There was a discussion for a while about going to 20 percent, which would be big. But he's today announced, uh, or allowed to be announced, that uh, it's going to be 15. Uh, we will be one of the lower tax business taxes in the world, and not as low as Ireland. They're at 12 and a half, but uh, a little bit below England, uh, and competitive with most of the nations of the world. It is a huge step forward. It is a promise kept. So, is the tax plan? A economic stimulus or is it a massive tax break for President Trump and his rich friends Leif Larson? Well I mean we all we have to take into account that this was what we, we, we in the digital realm usually call a soft rollout. Um, there were no hard details it was a list of things that he would like to see done which all uh, most of them need to be done. I mean the tax rate right now <clears throat> is all over the place it should be simplified it's the best way for all Americans to, to, to figure their tax and have an idea you know, from, from day in, day out, where they are in, on, on the tax shelf. So I like it. I think there's a lot of good things in there. We're going to have to wait until September to see where everything falls for all the hard specifics. But I kind of like it. I think it keeps a lot of the, uh, uh, the major write-offs that a lot of people like, um, uh, you know, for mortgage and things like that, in the bill, uh, in the tax plans. <clears throat> so people will still be able to get credit for those, but there'll also be a simplified lower brackets for everybody across the board. So I think it's a, it's a win for, for, for all Americans. Bill Buck, how do you see this tax plan? If you can well, call I, it a plan. I think calling it a plan, uh, it's a one pager that it took them 98 days to put together. It's kind of <laughs> embarrassing. I worked at the Treasury Department uh, under Secretary Summers and... Uh, we won't hold that against we, you. <laughs> well, we, we wouldn't have put out anything that embarrassingly like you know, undetailed, but the basic problem here is that what this is, is a, it's a giant tax cut. It's not tax reform. It's not doing anything to the tax code. It's pulling a giant hole in the deficit and saying, you know, it's like the, the old story goes that, you know, three people are in a 10 foot pit, no way to get out. The economist says, well, let's assume a ladder. That's what they're doing. They're assuming massive growth, which is unproven historically. It just, it, and we also know, like, they can't pass health care reform. It's questionable whether they'll be able to keep the government open. I think this is just, you know, just another ploy to try and get through the week for them. Yes, Gregory Clay, there did seem to be some surprise among Treasury officials, mm. reportedly when President Trump announced on Twitter, where else, that yeah, it would yeah, be less Wednesday normal. that the yeah. tax plan would be announced. Oh, yeah, less. Well, Twitter, of course, is like um, his Moses tablet, I guess, right? You know, um, although y y you kind of get the digital reference, don't you? Mm -hmm. Moses tablet, mm -hmm. get it, get it? Yeah. All right, cool. But anyway, <laughs> now, correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding is that his tax plan is not going to touch 401ks. Is that right? 401ks will not be taxed, right? Well, there's very little detail, which I think is part of the problem mm -hmm. with uh, the but, analysts. But in other words, your 401ks to... are safe. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Okay. But, but future, uh, 
future money put in would be taxed on the front end rather than the back end. Oh, okay. Okay. And also number two. This is not a good deal for middle class families. Okay. Uh, yeah, but, uh, okay, number two. Is this going to be the postcard tax return that we've been hearing about for years? Where you, where you do your tax return on the postcard? Wasn't Steve Forbes the first person who brought up this postcard thing on the tax return? I mean, is, I, it, is this is is this it? Bill touched on it uh, on it earlier when he said the Democrats are going to kill everything that comes to the to the floor of the House and the Senate, but just because that's all that they have. And oh, and he's right. He's right. It's going to be hard we, to get anything passed. Can I ask one basic math question? Sixty. Sixty is what's needed to pass spending. So they need that. If it's revenue neutral. If it's revenue neutral, but this is a tax cut, so okay. things are going to need to be passed uh, that require sixty votes. Uh, but okay. the, the postcard, um, right? It's not going to be the postcard, but it's not going to be the the fifteen pager. I'd probably say this cuts it down to somewhere around five. Uh -huh. But five the five page tax returns. Five page tax. Returns. Okay, me personally, I need as complicated a tax return as I can. <laughs> so, that, that, that's to my advantage. That's well, to my see, advantage. that was the problem. It was to the advantage uh, of a lot of people that wrote off. Um, you know, a lot of business things, which, yeah, like which save them a lot of money. Exactly. And, 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 and exactly. large corporations that abuse right. that. This won't do that. This also offers up uh, uh, incentives for people to bring in, in, in bring money back to the United States mm -hmm. uh, in the way of large corporations, mm -hmm. as long as they maintain their headquarters and set their headquarters here in the U.S. Uh, for, for moving on after they bring their, their money back. But mm -hmm. I think there's a lot to be there's a lot to look at here. And it, like you said, there's not a lot of meat on the bone, and we won't find out until September, yeah. um, but we'll have a lot of discussion, I'm sure, back and forth between now and then. So okay. there, there does yeah. seem to be some discussion that this tax plan does seem similar to what President Trump had proposed during the campaign, and analysts looking at that plan said that this would cost seven trillion dollars, I believe, seven billion dollars. Well, maybe it's not that. I've, I've seen the, the, the negative reporting that said it'll cost 5.5. And but and as you said, there's no proof of economic growth that comes from 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 mm -hmm. uh, cutting taxes. But I think you know it, 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 we 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 will and we are moving in towards a, a large uh, you know rebound from uh, the past eight years of of uh, hard times that we've seen. Um, a lot of uh, growth in the uh, in the stock market, and I think that that's that's also uh -huh. to pardon a phrase that it's going to drive Bill crazy. Trickling down a little bit into uh -oh, the uh, middle down. class. Ronald but Reagan. but we are seeing you know we I, I think there's there's a, there's a lot of good that can come in the way of of, of stimulus and stimulating mm -hmm. uh, small business growth and entrepreneurship from these type of cuts that are basically meant to do that. So that means that we'll get four to five percent uh, GDP, right? Oh, we'll, get better. well, at least get back to three. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. So Bill Buck, I assume you're not buying the trickle down argument. I mean, we've tried it multiple times. It doesn't work. It, it's just fact at this point. Um, but the other thing that I take issue with is the eight years of hard times. I, I think if you look back at where we were eight years ago, coming out of the uh, Bush presidency, I mean, those were hard economic times and we saw a solid recovery okay, and so long growth. Well, I don't know. You, you're, you, you have more economic background than I do, but under under was it under two point percent growth in the, yeah, in the doing President Obama is not yeah. considered right a strong and right. economic of course, growth. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but President Obama never had a year of at least three percent growth rate. Am I right? Yes. But, but it, let's we have to move on. Right. Given the lack of details, maybe we'll <laughs> table this until September. <laughs> but uh, I'd like to remind our viewers that you can submit your questions to our guests through our website www.publicsquare.net and we'll answer as many as we can live on air towards the end of the show. Moving on, President Trump this week was forced to abandon his demand for funding a border wall, at least for now. Here's White House Budget Director Mick Mulvaney discussing it with Jake Tapper on CNN. Uh, the, the Republican proposal in the House will not include funding for President Trump's border wall with Mexico. Is President Trump willing to sign a government spending bill that does not include that money? Yeah, because I think the bill, at least the, the offer that we received from the Democrats the last couple of days, uh, included a, a, a good bit of money for border security. The Democrats said they go to the mat and shut the government down over the border wall, the, the bricks and mortar. But there's a lot of things we agree on, both parties do, in securing the border. And it allows the president to follow through on his promise to make that border more secure, stop people coming over, stop drugs from coming over. 
So, Gregory Clay, is President Trump giving up on his most famous or infamous campaign promise, the border wall with Mexico? Well, it surely appears to be that way if he wants to get a deal. I mean, he has to have a deal by the weekend, correct? And um, in terms of keeping the federal government going, um, you know, uh, but, but with Trump, you know, one day it's a yes, the next day it's, it's a no. You know, I'm sure Buck knows what I'm talking about, you know, and like you said, you know, we'll know on Twitter, you know, um, you know, uh, one day it, the light is green, the next day the light is red. So I guess, I'll, I guess what I'm saying is, who the hell knows? You know, <laughs> no, that's no. the best way I can put it. Bill Buck, do you know, Certain, is this a sign that the White, me. Is the White yeah. House becoming more pragmatic, just realizing that this is not going to get done? I don't know that pragmatic is the word. I think they're just, you know, you have to deal with reality. You don't have the votes, you don't have the votes. Um, and this, this is a problem that predates uh, Trump's arrival. The House has historically, even before uh, Boehner retired, it was one of the things that drove him to retirement, was that they couldn't count votes and they couldn't count on people to actually do what they said they were going to do. Um, and you're seeing this problem now. They can't, they've got enough votes in the House and the Senate, enough members in the House and the Senate to take care of this without Democrats. They can't do it. They can't govern. They need Democrats to govern. But they want Democrats to vote for Trump Care or vote for the wall. They're not going to do that. So, you know, I think the wall that is being built is the one that they're driving about 200 miles directly into, which is a government shutdown, which yeah. Republicans, again, this is like trickle-down economics. They do it over and over and over and over again, and they always fail. Oh, Isn't go. it the case, Leif Larson, that this <laughs> budget just had to be passed with Republicans controlling both Houses of Congress and the White House, it would be a disaster. But the, the, control, the control in the House is one thing. The control in the, in the Senate for spending bills, like we said, it requires 60 votes. And so you have to have, like you said, you have to have some Democrats along. Mm. But with, with the Democrats in the position of resist, we're not going to work on anything. And, and there was an interesting article that came up about do Democrats as we're seeing, maybe a little bit more pro, uh, uh, of an easing of, of Trump's positions, do Democrats want to see him succeed? They don't, and they won't. They, they will watch the government sink to the ground because that's in their favor. So what we have here is we have uh, Trump and his administration offering an olive branch, and they offered two. We won't ask for the funding for the, for the wall. We won't cut the, the spending to keep the ACA afloat, also known as Obamacare. And what do the Democrats do? They fail to show up for negotiations. They him and haw. They throw new things out at the last minute because they can't win without the shutdown. Now, the Republicans will get blamed for the shutdown. There's no question about as that. As usual. They run, they run both houses, and they have, yeah. they, you know, according to the people, yes. as they understand it, they're the government. Right. But if it does shut down, you know, this, there's no two ways about it. This is because the Democrats wanted the shutdown sure, yeah. because they gained from it. Yeah. And so what the American people need to understand is the shutdown was a political move, which shock about all shocks to everybody but us. Washington is all about politics, and that's what the Democrats are looking at. So, I mean, you know, Nancy Pelosi laid it out on the line. You know, we, you know, we want to see, you know, disaster. We want to see, you know, collapse. And um, I think Trump is looking better and better, and it'll be reflected, I think, if, if it does go to a shutdown after he's offered, listen, I, I won't ask for spending right now for the wall. Um, I won't ask. I won't cut spending to keep Obamacare artificially afloat for a while, while longer. We'll keep. We'll keep doing that. Yeah. Just go along and let's keep the government open. And if the Democrats balk at that, you know, I, I, I think it'll come back to hurt them. But this morning there was supposedly a deal for a clean CR for a week. A continuing resolution. Yes. yes. Yeah, so but it, but it, but it, but it wasn't real. It was fake. The Republicans came forward. Fake and they news. Were gonna, they were going to. They were going to put. <laughs> ah. Um, Fake news. Trump care as part of the deal, and that's when Democrats said, "No, we're not going to do this." It wasn't because, part of the deal because it was, it's always Lucy with the football. It wasn't part. It wasn't part of the deal. It was. Time. It was a separate vote to repeal uh, the ACA. Mm -hmm. And Nancy Pelosi, like I said, said, "Oh, if if you have a separate vote to repeal the ACA, then we're going to sink the the, the, the CR." 
No. So that's yeah. that was that was it's the Democratic position. If I may, if we no. can get out of the Washington weeds <laughs> for a minute, mm -hmm. yeah. but, the, if you look at Trump's voters. Obamacare will be remaining in place under this budget proposal. Right. There's not going to be a wall, wall under this proposal. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Surely they're, they can only blame that on one person, President Trump. Well, that's what I said. Uh, I'll you know, go back to what I said before. One day red, another day green. Now, getting back to the wall, now I understand that there is a proposal to use the bread seized from El Chapo to fund the wall. We've heard about this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, called the El Chapo wall because supposedly he's worth what, $1.4 billion or something in um, blood money or whatever? And, uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I understand that Newt Gingrich is, is for this, as well as a couple of other people. Now, how realistic is that? I mean, is that real or was that, quote, unquote, like, fake news? We have, we have a couple of things. I mean, you know, the, is anybody correct me if I'm wrong, but in keeping all that money, they didn't run up against a, a diplomatic problem with, 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 with the Mexico. United States of Mexico. Yeah. Um, but quite frankly, El Chapo, they couldn't, they couldn't maintain El Chapo and, and, and hold him in prison. They had to bring him here to the United States. I think there's, there's some sense to be made of, you know, he's our problem now, so uh -huh. we should get, we should get, so we know, should get a, the a money. Lion yeah. Um, I think, I, 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 I don't think it will go in that direction. Um, how Trump will, rea will, will realize his, his, his dream of making Mexico pay for it. Mm. I have no idea. Maybe, pay for what El Chapo. Maybe that, or maybe he <laughs> seizes, you know, a, a percentage of money going back <clears throat> um, in the way of wire transfers or, or you know, ask for credit, you know, a, a yeah. high, high amount of interest on those type of things. I don't know. Um, but I do know this. Even though the, the funding isn't going forward today for the wall, illegal crossings are down by what I believe fi over 50% yeah. since Trump was sworn yeah. in. Yeah. Right. So even if the wall isn't built, uh -huh. it is working, working. because yeah. people right. are not crossing, crossing illegally, which right. saves lives. Right. Which has actually yeah. been a years long trend. Yeah. Not by 50%. Not by, yeah, not by, by that much, no way. Not okay. 50%. Well, uh, it's then, I, th you know, I think it's the Trump effect. Okay. Well, no, we'll yeah. skip the math last time. <laughs> we will, because we, we <laughs> will move on uh, to our final segment, which is looking back uh, on the Trump administration as it approaches its 100th day. So, Gregory Clay, how do you assess the progress? If you had to give the president a grade after his uh, 100th day, um, what grade would you give? Uh, oh, Mr. President? Trump? Mr. Trump. Um, I, for a letter grade, I would give him a C. Because I'm kind of in the middle of the role on this thing, you know. And before you talk about Donald Trump in a hundred days, I think you have to hearken back to the 1960s. Who in the 1960s? Coach John Wooden. Who was he? He coached UCLA basketball to 10 championships in 12 years. John Wooden is known for what besides being a great basketball coach? Adages, maxims, um, axioms. One of his great adages or sayings was what? Don't mistake activity for achievement. What does that mean in regards to Donald Trump? It means your boy is busy 24 hours a day, seven days a week, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But how much has he really done? You know, for, uh, for, uh, for as I understand, he has no legislative accomplishment, am I right or wrong, in terms of dealing with Congress. Am I right, Mr. Buck, Mr. Larson? That is correct. Most of his, uh, most of his actions have been uh, what they call what, uh, EOs, also known as executive orders. Repealing you know? Obama's executive orders. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, and he, he um, uh, Neil Gorsuch became um, the, the newest member of the Supreme Court, but then they had to change the rules to, to get that done. So um, don't mistake activity for achievement. So Bill Buck, what does your report card read for President Trump? I would give him an incomplete. Whoa. Needs to spend less time on the golf course. Whoa. Okay. And uh, is there any <laughs> signature and achievement I, that you I can know point that, at for the president? I know much like Melania stole part of her speech, I'm, I'm stealing a line from Mr. Trump himself on, oh. on the golf critique. Yes. Um, but uh, in all seriousness, I mean, like, you know, the, 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 the tax rollout this week is, I think, the ultimate example of, um, you know, how ill-equipped this administration is to run the government. But, Putting out a one pager on the 98th day and saying you're rolling out a major, it's a major tax policy event, is not, that's not serious stuff. Putting out, you know, 
a number of executive orders that have been torn down by the court because they were blatant violations of the Constitution. Like, that's just sloppy work. It's <laughs> sloppy work by, done by people who don't know what they're doing. Yeah. So th th this, this, I, I mean, I, I, I can tell you worked in, in a past administration because only the, <laughs> only the, only the Washington elite are equipped to lead, lead the country. And the thing is, no. wh what, we, what we're looking at is we're looking at a completely new animal here. The Trump administration isn't anything that we've seen probably since uh, the, the, the Theodore Roosevelt administration when, when we had a populist come in then also. Mm -hmm. What we're looking at, and can anybody tell me, when was the first time we started looking at 100 days of a presidency? And in fact, as with all good things in Washington, that's even a lie. FDR. FDR, yeah. who, who said it in 1933, but he was referring to 100 days yeah. of congressional on-the-job work. And we've kind of just mowed it into this thing, and it's a, it's a nice little uh, measuring stick for the, for the, uh, uh, the news uh, agencies to, to get a new story out. Mm -hmm. It's media-driven. It's media-driven, and it doesn't mean anything. And even the media say it doesn't mean anything right. either, so, you know, why we keep but going at it. But if the, it, well, it's good for if ratings. It, if it it's great for ratings. If it doesn't mean anything, why would the administration roll out this one-page tax plan? I mean, that just mm -hmm. looked surely like no, I don't it think was it for the benefit like, of the No, 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 no. I think, I think they, they, they're, he... Trump is keeping up with what he said he would do. I'm going to live up to everything I promised on the campaign trail, which most politicians don't. They, ju they, they promise things and they roll back. Trump, I think you're going to see, will live up to him. Will he take a lot of, a lot of bruises for it? Sure, because he's facing not only uh, a solid 100% I will never work with the Trump administration Democratic Party, but he's also bumping up against Republicans because at the, at the heart of it, Trump's not a Republican. He's a populist, so he has to he has to work with both sides of the group, and one plays somewhat nicely, but kind of stays to the side of the sandbox that they feel more comfortable in. The other people won't even get in the sandbox. So, you know, he's facing a lot of things that most presidents don't face. Um, this is a completely, like I said, it's something that we haven't seen in a long time, um, and I, you know, I, so I think these artificial measurements really don't. How it, Don't hold so you, you might not be buying the measurement, but are you giving him a grade? Am I giving him a grade? grade? Um, I would probably say, no, I'd probably say maybe a, a, a C plus because I think mm. there were some missteps and I early on. Um, mm. I, I, I still don't know who should have their head chopped, uh, chopped mm. off for letting the Flynn stuff, you know, you know right. kind of leak right. through. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, I'd say, you know, there was certain missteps. But mm. I, and I think most Americans do, will give him the benefit of the doubt that he is not a, a politician, so he didn't roll into town right. and start taking in, uh, you know, people that had already held these positions mm -hmm. and are kind of the oligarch uh, class that sit here in Washington and run things. And I think they'll give him the benefit of the doubt that he does have a little bit more of a yeah. So you're cutting him slack because he's more of a business person than a politician. However... But he is the president of the United States. He is the president of the United States. So you would hope that perhaps more progress might have been made by something now. Tells but we do have to move on, oh, Gregory. Uh, I apologize. Because now it is time to take some questions from our viewers. And we'll take the first one from Van Wheeler, who asks, if Trump can't even repeal Obamacare, how much of the rest of his agenda will he get through Congress? Bill Buck, you were alluding to I, that earlier. I, I think very little. I think that that has something to do with his own management style, and it also has to do with the unique problems of, you know, that Mr. Ryan faces on a daily basis with his caucus. It's the same reason that his predecessor just decided to go back to Ohio and play golf and smoke cigars. I, I'd probably, I'd probably, I, I agree quite a bit with with, 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 with that assessment. Um, like I said, he's a, he's, he's, he's not. A Republican who has all these Republicans on his side, Republican Party, contrary to what most people will say, is a bigger tent party. We have a, we have a lot of, we listen to our, our ultra-conservatives and the moderates. The Democrats tend to weed people out that they don't want involved in the government so they can control their group a little bit better. So I, I would agree, he'll get things passed, but it'll be a little while. Okay, and our next question comes from Tasha Newman. And uh, we have discussed it somewhat, Gregory Clay, but Tasha's question is, Will the border wall ever get built? Oh. It might not be getting built this time around in this budget, but well, is it ever going to happen? Oh, okay, I, I'll, you know, I, I'll just be plain. Malcolm X used to say, Michael, make it plain. I say the border wall only gets built if it's the El Chapo border wall, okay? <laughs> Furthermore, going back to something earlier, the question, uh, 
you, you have to assume Donald Trump, if he's going to do something his first term, he has to get as much done as possible by the midterm elections. Okay? See where I'm coming from on this? Because what happens if the Democrats take over both houses? Okay. Yes. Well, now it's time for our regular segment, which is the most underreported story of the week. And who would like to start? Bill, we've not been here together before. Sure. So would you go ahead? Uh, I will go with uh, the Republican Congress's decision today to roll out a new form of uh, ACA repeal that exempts <clears throat> Congress from some of the rules, like they want to take away pre-existing conditions from every other American except the oligarchs, to borrow a phrase, in Congress seem to think that they're entitled to the best protections from Obamacare, but the rest of the American public is not worthy of such things. And do you think they'll get away with that? No, I think that this is going to be part of, you know, there are a lot of factors. This is one of the factors. I think the, you know, one of the problems that we didn't get into in the the tax question is they're taking away, one of the ideas is to take away itemized deductions. So if you live in a state like New York or California or Pennsylvania or D.C. where tax rates are higher, you can't deduct that anymore. Those are the sorts of things that uh, the middle class is going to revolt about. And Leif Larson, I'm sure you want to jump in on that, but I'd what's your most underreported story my, this week? <laughs> yeah, I was, gonna, I was going to, and I was <laughs> going to bring it. Um, my underreported story is the fact that for the first time across the country, we have seen an in, we have seen deaths in traffic accidents due to drug use surpass alcohol use. Um, and that drug use is not only mar uh, cannabis, marijuana, it also includes opioids and uh, uh, pharma other pharmaceuticals. But it, 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 it's, it, I don't think it's a coincidence that this is now happening when we have seen a slowly sted uh, slow, steady rate of states legalizing recreational marijuana. Uh, you know, in Colorado, it rose, they, they've seen um, deaths due to traffic accidents since 2005 was at 21 percent um, with a, with with marijuana use. It's now at 45. What about Washington? Um, Washington, I don't have the information mm -hmm. on. In Washington, that's that's the problem with some of these statistics. The states, some report, some don't in different different, different ways. Mm -hmm. But in, but we can see it in we can see it in Colorado. And you know, I, I don't know if it reflects on the fact that marijuana is a dangerous drug, mm -hmm. or does it reflect on the fact that people are under the false idea that using marijuana doesn't have any negative effects on their or impair their judgment. And I think that's something that our society is going to have to grapple with and come to terms with that, yes, it does. It's the same as having a couple beers. So, Okay. And Gregory Clay, your most underreported story this week? Yes. I'm going sports. I'm going to NFL. I'm going NFL draft. There is a shock. Okay. <laughs> uh, Larson and his beloved Raiders, who are on the move, I must admit. Okay. Now, NFL draft, April 27, 28, 29. Okay, it's amazing that some of the athletes are still acting crazy despite the Joe Mixon hitting the woman video and the Aaron Hernandez hit man uh, uh, prison, et cetera, et cetera. And a couple of guys only mere days before the draft are busted for domestic violence and one and another faces rape accusations. Not charges yet, but accusations. Okay, so lots of problems for the NFL to grapple with. But uh, that is it for us for this week. My name's Adam Beer. Thanks for watching The Square Circle. We'll see you next week.